Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. I hope you all had a great weekend. So if you have a client you attended with bilateral occluding earwax and dead skin, so keratin, and we're starting off with the left ear, and this left ear canal entrance is extremely narrow. I had a, another procedure, let me just check what number it was, just in case you want to watch it yourselves. Let's have a look. It was uh, video number 664, the impossible earwax removal, um, shut ear canal. So this is a very similar case actually. The ear canal entrance um, is extremely narrowed. It's what we call a collapsed ear canal entrance. So the cartilage, the outer third of the ear canal is made up of cartilage. And that cartilage over the years is weakened and it's closed upon itself. It's similar to your nose. So the upper third of your nose is actually made up of bone and the lower two thirds of your nose is made up of cartilage. And over the years that cartilage weakens and with gravity your nose, well, most people's noses begin to droop slightly just because that cartilage is weakened and gravity takes um, over and control. And it can sometimes be the case also with your ears. Um, having said that, the patient's, I would say the patient's medial, so the inner two thirds of the ear canal, which is made up of bone, is also a bit narrow. So I wouldn't put it all down to just age and the weakened ear canal. Um, it could just be anatomical as well at times. Um, so one of the, what, what people sometimes who perform ear wax removal using different techniques, different visualization techniques, is that, oh, you can't perform endoscopic ear wax removal in narrow ears. Well, that's not true. And here you, you can see uh, I'm removing this plug of wax and keratin endoscopically. And the reason why uh, a lot of people say this is because with an endoscopic approach, we're not using a speculum. So if you watch that video 664, at the end of the video, I've uploaded some images of what speculums are. There's different types. And what a speculum does, it can open up and widen and straighten the outer third of the ear canal, the cartilaginous portion. However, the downside of that is the speculum reduces the view. Um, the tip of the speculum can be can range between three millimeters and six millimeters, I believe. The average ear canal aperture, so the height of the ear canal is greater than the width, so it's like an oval shape. And it varies between individuals and it can vary along an individual's own ear canal as you enter towards the towards the eardrum. So the average length of an ear canal is row. Um, to 2.6 centimeters roughly to three centimeters but on average i would say the height of an average ear canal is probably between 0 0.8 0 0.9 millimeters so just under a centimeter and the width is between 0 0.5 0 0.7 millimeters so the speculum automatically reduces that aperture um, you're working uh, kind of like a, a maximum six millimeter uh, circle. So it's no longer even an oval shape because the tip of the, the whole of the speculum, so it's like a funnel. The speculum is like a funnel. It, it's a wide aperture. And then the, the tip that goes into you narrows. And the tip, as I said, typically comes up to six millimeters. I think you can get seven millimeters as well. And it reduces the field of view. So with an endoscope, the whole, the major benefit of an endoscope is the field of view it provides. So. And that's why um, keyhole surgery with an endoscope is uh, such a valuable resource. Not only does it reduce um, scarring and it reduces um, rehab time, healing time, the view you get on an endoscope is unparalleled. It's almost like you're inside the ear yourself and you can, you're, you're trapped in a bubble and you can see all around you. It's unparalleled. It's a panoramic field of view. So. We don't have a speculum with an endoscope, but that's a good thing because you take away the major asset of an endoscope. So instead, there's a technique that you use to stretch open the ear canal um, so you can get access. And that's something that we teach in our clear wax training courses to our delegates. So this left ear is completely clean. You can just see how narrow the ear canal is now that I've not stretched the ear. It's, it's virtually shut. Um, so it's just a, a technique that you have to develop and acquire and just comes with experience and it's no problem whatsoever performing endoscopic earwax removal in a narrow ear. So if, if anyone watching this is an ear care specialist or thinking of being trained in ear care, um, 
don't listen to any false information that might be out there. I've got plenty of videos to, to show you that an endoscope is the perfect instrument to remove earwax and dead skin or infected debris from the ear canal. So we're just onto the right ear. The right ear canal, it's not as narrow as the left, it's a bit wider. So we've got a lot of dead keratin here. So we're just, this is quite lateral. And you can see, we know it's quite lateral because you can see some of the cilia, the hairs. So the hair follicles in the ear, every, well, most people have hair follicles in the ear. And these hair follicles are found in the outer third, the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal. And we know it's skin because with skin, quite often you get a reflection. Um, so when you, so with the endoscope, we've obviously got a light source which illuminates the inside of the ear. And when that light shines on skin, typically we get a reflection back and you can see some of that, it's quite white. Whereas wax generally absorbs it a bit more, uh, unless it's really, really solid, hard ear wax, and that can also reflect the light. So we know we're working with skin, and we know we're near the entrance, and we're just wriggling this keratin plug through the entrance. And with skin adhesions, they also adhere to the ear. They're attached to the ear canal, so we have to work it, work it loose. So we're just stretching the right ear open. That's the patient. So you can see it's a lot wider, this ear canal. Textbook eardrum, just a bit of loose wax near the right near the eardrum. Just to remove that, some hairs that I'm trying to vacuum out as well that got loose and trapped in the ear. So I'm just mopping up near the entrance. Patient was over the moon. Got recommended by a friend of his, and um, attended. Uh, and this is all the wax and dead skin lined up on the tissue. I then measured it, so it's just over 10 centimetres, 10.1 centimetres to be exact. And I also think I measured it in inches. So it's 3.99 inches. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. I've got a really good one. Hopefully I can upload it tomorrow. It's of um, me removing dead wax and skin off a patient with bilateral false fundus, which is a, a second false eardrum. Um, so we'll talk about that more when I upload it. I'll try and get that one done tomorrow, but if not, it'll be uploaded during the week. Have a great evening, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.